everyone. <clears throat> Here today to um, finish off project five, the take it apart, put it back together, an analysis project. Um, just a quick review. I asked you guys to find an artist, um, either from one of these sites or one of your own, that you were gonna um, subjectively, formally, and conceptually analyze. Um, so I chose Jorg Dressler. I found him on the Jealous Curator's Instagram page and asked him for permission, um, which I'm excited that he did. Um, I provided a two-dimensional design glossary of terms to help you with your formal analysis, which is at the end of this document. Um, and I started by doing a formal analysis, working through the glossary of terms um, to try to figure out the kind of formal elements and principles of design that Jorg Dressler uses in his work. My example just shows line, but I was hoping that you would work through all of the glossary. Um, I then went on to do a subjective analysis where I talked about what subject he was using in his painting. I'm gonna choose a different subject, um, but try to emulate some of his um, form in my own set of um, vocabulary of marks, color, composition, and so forth, just being inspired by him. Um, then I did the conceptual analysis where I took a guess at what I thought his work was about based on his form and subject and then followed up with some research by reading more about him with his bio and his artist statement and um, online reviews and so forth to try to figure out um, if I was right. Then I did the take it apart portion of the project where I asked you to create four little small test paintings um, by taking apart elements of your artist's um, work. And now we're on to the put it back together part. So inspired by his form, using my own subject and coming up with my own content. Um, so here is um, some of Dressler's work. The things I was excited about um, is the use of low chroma, um, complicated geometric shapes in the background that are flat. His use of pretty resolved, um, little detail areas where he used things we've talked about in class, big, medium, and small shapes, um, 150 zero values, building from the back up. Um, and that's gonna help inspire me when I go to paint my flowers instead of um, landscapes. <clears throat> I loved his flat use of backgrounds. Um, so I'll keep those things in mind while I'm making mine. I then went on to find my own subject material um, and I'm using imagery from friends of mine. So I asked permission. Um, this is a bouquet made by my friend um, at Abadalia Floral. Um, here's a friend with some of her hand dyed silk ribbons and photographs that um, she took. <clears throat> some of my photographer friends took the pictures using some of the color palette from these. Um, I think that's it, yes. Okay, so I started by making some compositional thumbnail sketches and then making a plan. Low chroma grays, greens, pinks, and beiges, bright whites and higher chroma in the small broken brush strokes and in the details. Using the floral and the ribbon image, um, going to use the vertical horizontal grid inspired by the invitation suites and some of my subject matter and trying to use these flat backgrounds. Um, so, here are my four little take it apart breakdown studies. Um, I think I'm gonna start with a higher chroma background and then work my way up to some detail and then incorporate some of these kind of brighter um, brushstroke moments. So I'll put those aside. Um, I laid out my design first and then just for the sake of the video, I did lay out my colors for you and wrote them in, but I've essentially created a color wheel. Um, I have my reds, I can, or my, excuse me, my yellows, I can build some of my oranges, my reds, this would be my, my violets, my blues, my blacks, my greens, and so forth. So it's the color wheel moving around. Um, I don't have any violets out of the tube, so I can mix some of those if I plan to use them. 
and I knew that I wanted to have a lot of green involved, so I did end up using four different greens. Pig, green, um, pale green, light, oxium, oxy, oxide chromium, viridian, thalo, I have an ultramarine oppression, a cad, which is my warm red, and a lizarin for my cool red. Um, and I have a soft mixing white and a titanium. This one's more transparent. So I'm gonna start with my negative space. <clears throat> and I think I'm gonna use that um, teal color. I'm gonna start with a um, titanium. Oops, I'm gonna get a towel. There we go. Wipe off my knife in between so I don't contaminate my colors. And I think I'm gonna use like the smallest bit of Prussian and maybe a little Payne's gray, which is like a cool grayish black. So tiny little bits and we'll see how it goes. I think I would like to use a little more gray Since I'm working in my home studio, um, I'm gonna mostly just use the um, Gamblin solvent, solvent-free fluid. And I think I'm gonna add a little so that I can change the viscosity of the paint and make it less like lipstick and more um, fluid. And that will increase gloss and help it um, dry pretty quickly. So. I have the medium, and this is the medium, in a little jar that I'm gonna use with a clean brush um, to drizzle into the paint so that I don't contaminate my medium. Put that aside. that brush for later. So you can see the viscosity of the paint really changing. And I think I'm gonna use a little more of the gray. Too much, I'll do it in doses here. I don't have an orange mixed up, but I know that if I want to neutralize my blue, <clears throat> that I need to use its complement. So I'm going to make a little orange to um, dull it down. I'm gonna use my warm, my warm red. My cadmium. And I'm gonna use my um, cad light yellow. I think I'm gonna do less red. I want the tiniest bit of this to <clears throat> neutralize my blue. So it's just kind of what's left on my palette knife.
Yeah, so that kind of pulled the chroma down, which I like. <clears throat> I also am feeling like where I'm at right now, I don't have enough if I'm gonna cover this whole negative space, so I'm gonna mix up a little more. I'm just gonna start with my white. That seems pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna use a flat synthetic brush to try to get a smooth, um, coating. And I'm just going to cut in the background. Still not sure I have enough paint. I'm gonna just cover up these little um, areas where I know I'm gonna put bright brights because I can kind of make those up later. And I don't want to have to cut all that background color around those shapes. And I know from my tests that I can um, float those on top after it dries a little. I'm going to do a little more of the medium to help me move it around. Just make a little puddle on my palette. If I didn't want it to dry quite so quickly, I could be using the straight linseed oil. But this will help it dry probably in about a day. Kind of worrying I didn't make enough. Painting it kind of thin over my drawing so I can see a little bit of my composition coming through.
I know I can cut this edge again when I paint my flat ribbon. I know there's some extra thick paint right here, so I'm kind of grabbing it, kind of running out. Using a kind of cross hatching mark to try to make it flat. I'm gonna cut in a little bit of blue behind the flowers so that I can have some of that negative space come through. Mixed barely enough here. leaving enough of the drawing underneath so I can see. Okay. coming up into some of the flowers a little bit so that I can not have that raw canvas showing through for that gessoed canvas. Making sure looks pretty flat. I used every last bit of that <clears throat> paint there. I'm glad I put that orange in the blue. It kind of made it look a little less like toothpaste and a little richer and grayer. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. So I'm gonna work my way from my boring up to my details. So I think I'm gonna work into my ribbon. Kind of looking at it from the side, making sure I have everything covered the way I want to. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave that brush here in case I need it later. Um, you know, while I'm at it, I might m try to mix up a little more of that um, so that I have it to work back into things and to tie some of the color families together. I'm using the cheap paint from our kit, the Winton student grade oil. I'm also using another student grade, but a little higher quality with the Gamblin 1980 brand. That's their student um, level. See if I can recreate this real quick. Oops, one. So 
I think I used a little Prussian. I used a little Payne's Gray. I used a little of the orange. Probably won't get quite the same color, but see how we do. more of the orange to gray it down a bit but I think for our cause this will work just so I have some leftover okay I'm gonna look at my ribbon information and look back at my test see if there's some colors that I like. I'm not sure I want to do that maroon color. I think I'll use this. Here's our stationery that I was thinking about referencing. So I think I'm going to try and mix up a, a pretty kind of lavender blue. So to start that, I'll mix up a little violet and I'm gonna use my Prussian and my alizarin and put it here and I'll have my full color wheel since I mixed my two secondaries and I came to the table with my green secondaries. I'm gonna do more of the alizarin than the Prussian. can't always tell what the color is when it's in its little pot, but when you kind of thin it out, you can see what the color will be. So it's a nice purple to start with. And then I would like to make it a little bluer and really pale. So I'm gonna use my soft mixing white. Clean off my knife here, because I don't think I'm gonna need very much of that color. So proportionately, it's still pretty big, so I'm gonna make quite a bit. I'm gonna use all that. So that was just the pigment that was left on my palette knife. It wasn't very much. So a little bluer. I think I'm going to use the Payne's Gray um, to make it a little richer and a little bluer. Um, yeah, I think so. Let's see. And I don't think I'm going to neutralize this one with yellow. I think I'm going to keep it a little bit of a cleaner chroma. <clears throat> Maybe a little blue. So this is where I might steal some of this mixed blue so that it's like a, a mother color.
so it ties in with the background a little more. And then I think I'm gonna um, cut this into three different values. So I'll do, this is a, I might write it down. I might do this as a dark. This is a light. This is a medium so that I'm using a value scale as it's shifting back. Light, medium, dark dark, light, this was supposed to be blue, I'll cut that in, I'll do this as a, what am I going to do this as, this will be a dark, I think this will be a dark, <clears throat> light, dark, medium, medium, dark, 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 light, medium, light. Oh, that's the problem. Let's see if we can save that. I bet this color is a little off, but we'll make it work. A little more of my solvent-free Gamblin fluid. I'm gonna put some on my purple while I've got it out. Again, this will kind of make it <clears throat> more viscous and make it dry a little quicker. Definitely needs more orange. So I'm just going to run with it. Having that medium in there helps me cut that harder edge. Does it look close? It looks pretty close. So that's a little lighter. Might cut a little bit into here. Not bad though. Okay, save that brush again for later. Seems pretty good. Okay. So I was gonna cut these down <clears throat> into my medium, dark, and light. Mix up the medium or mix up the blending medium, that is, not the medium value. Okay, so I'll put a little here. I think I wanted it a little bluer too. So it's not just a, a value scale, but also a um, chroma shift. 
So that's some pressure. I'm going to use all the violet just so that I use it and <clears throat> have enough to get the ribbons covered. I think it's too dark. get a little more of the soft mixing white. I'm going to come back to that because I'm not sure what I want to do with it yet. So I think I'm going to cut this down pretty pale. I'm going to add a little blue to this one. And I think I'm going to use the blue family I made. might blew up this one a little. I think just to change the temperature, maybe I'll shift to using a little of the ultramarine. Oops, that was a big tinting strength. That was a little more than I wanted. Maybe though, maybe it, it's exactly what the ribbon wanted. Let's see, I'll pull the picture over. I always find it helpful to have color inspiration that's visual because it forces me to try to use my color theory to try to match. So let's see how we did. Oof, look at that. Oops. Yeah, closer. The ultramarine was where it was at. Okay. I'm going to again use a flat synthetic. I'm going to start with the darks. I might charge my brush a little with the medium. I dipped it in here a little bit just to get it going. So I've got dark, 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 dark. I might shift those. Maybe I'll mix something in between for that one. I'll start with this one and then I'll lighten this one. That's what I'll do because I want it to come forward. I'm going to try and cut some of this back behind where I know some flowers will go. trying to make sure to have a nice edge between the negative and the positive. You can see where it's pulling in a little of my light value. makes me wonder if when my example painting artist, George Dressler, paints his flat shapes, he must let them dry. But I was really looking at his paintings up close as, close as I could online and 
<clears throat> it looks like he's using tape. So to use tape, it probably has to be dry layers. making sure to really get into the little divots in the canvas so that I have a, a nice coverage. I don't ever paint this way with these hard edge lines, which are really fun to do, or rarely do. Do another little layer. trying to really float this layer on top to get rid of some of that brush stroke quality. You can see where that second layer kind of got rid of some of this transparency. My alizarin and my Prussian are showing a little of their transparent qualities there. It's like a coloring book. trying to use the pressure of the brush stroke to make it kind of have a sharp end. Yeah, looks pretty good. I have a little highlight here. I might leave it a little bit. I like this little guy and these little things. So I might mix a little more Payne's gray in these, and then that's where I can put the darker darks, but I might come back to that because they're little. I think I want to work big to little. Okay, so this was my next dark, but I think I'm going to lighten it up a little. Um, I'm going to use that mixing white and I'm not going to use a whole lot grab some of that blue See, I think we're getting closer and closer to our ribbon. Looks pretty great. <clears throat> I think I'm going to mix this right in there. There's a lot of paint in my brush. I'm going to squeeze it out so I can use it. a little more of my medium to help move it around. I'm going to drizzle this right on the canvas. Again, 
and taking care on the edges because I want it to have that kind of graphic quality. had enough coffee today. I feel like I'm not mixing up enough pigment. I'm not going to worry about that too much right there because I'm going to put flowers over it. Okay, here goes my edge. I'm going to squeeze the paint that's at the top of the brush down. Oops. I'm going to paint it a little thinner and a little messy around where I know I want this little tendril. So I leave some room for that um, part of the plant, but also I'm kind of messy pulling some of it, that negative space under so that I can um, use it as a kind of color family to tie those positives and negatives together. Flatten this out a little. I'm gonna leave that little I think a couple of these little moments where they tangle together might be fun. Okay, so that was my darkest dark. I also had a dark here um, that I wanted to feel like that pulled forward, so I changed the value. Um, I might jump back to this darker dark for this one or somewhere in between. So I think I'm going to grab some of this, kind of mix that together. getting that paint out of my brush so I can use it. Be careful on my blue. I want to really get rid of that graphite line. Have a nice clean edge. That's a nice little moment. Maybe I'll take this color and run it there. I'm running out, let's pull some out here. I 
There's always so much paint in your brush. Just thinking about where I was going to go. I think I was going to go here. Might be wondering why I'm using such a big brush for a tiny spot, but just using the corner. And it's all about having the paint runny enough. To control that edge. If I wasn't on camera, I would probably flip my canvas right now. There we go. That's pretty good. That's kind of fun where the blue bled into that a little bit. I might, while I have this color up, also use it in these darks. Maybe that could be a darker dark and these could be lighter. I'll mix it somewhere in between. This is where it gets hard because it's wet. Not so worried about here because I'm going to um, feather the leaves on top of it. Painting with this really flat, hard edge quality is definitely like... Um, Paint by number. I grab this old violet. Again, I've got quite a bit of paint in the brush. I think I can grab that last dark with it. It's a good painting day when you don't run out and you use every last drop. Wish that had been darker. That's okay. <clears throat> so I'm kind of looking through to see if I should put any of these darkers somewhere else. I might do it here on this dark while I've got it mixed up. I might put a little more medium to get the last little bit of this color that I have left. grab that old violet, that violet I made with the Prussian and the alizarin. Get all of it out of the ferrule. I've got it. That's a lot of paint. Okay, 
again, kind of bumping up into the flower. Just kind of layer a second coat. This is because these are those transparent colors. <clears throat> oh, that's fun. This got a little too transparent, so I'll probably sprinkle some petals over that. Yeah, I think so. So now I can move on to my medium value. How are we doing here, I wonder? It's pretty violet, a little more violet than I had thought. So maybe when I put this blue medium in the mediums, it'll value, it'll kind of um, bring it up a little. Uh oh, my cheap brushes are fighting me. Let's see where my cheap handle fell into the paint. Ah, there it goes. Okay, I'm gonna take the color that was on there and kind of mix that in so that it's that similar family. Kind of pull that all out and mix it good. Having a better handle with this size of painting, knowing how much paint I'll need. So I'm gonna look and see what I already painted and how much I mixed up and see if I'm gonna have enough. Medium, medium, medium. Yeah, that should be good. I'm curious, I think this is the color of the ribbon. Oh, pretty close, pretty close. Okay, the medium. Hmm, I wonder if it's too close to that. Maybe, I think I'm gonna lighten it. More mixing white. Yeah, that's quite a bit lighter. Scoop that old color out of there. Yeah, that's better. Oops, getting crazy here. myself to breathe. A few times in undergrad when I ever tried to do pottery, I wouldn't breathe. And I think that's why I could never do it. Use a little more of this to thin it out so it can move about. here. I think my friend that hand dyed this ribbon would be proud of the color mix I did. I think we're getting close. This is where it's fun cutting these hard edge lines. It's all about having that paint at the top of the brush. Pull that out of there. It's 
kind of cool. It grabbed a little of that dark, allowing for almost like a little tiny core cast shadow. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. I don't think I would have made a painting like this in a million years. And hopefully, by no means does it look like our inspiration artist that we looked at for the example, but it sure changed my approach on how I would make <clears throat> something. I'm learning a lot and it's pretty fun to do these um, value shifts. Well, it's not a hundred, it's still kind of a three shift value. So I'll call it 150 and then I'll do my zeros um, and then kind of mixing in between so that they're shifting a little bit along the way. using the corner of that flat brush to get that hard edge. I'm gonna clean that little hard edge up there when I cut that color in. I don't know what I'm gonna do that. I didn't put a thing. Maybe I could do, I don't know. We'll see. This looks like a medium. There's a medium. I'm gonna try to cut that pretty thin. making sure I'm really filling in all those little sections of the canvas so I don't have any raw canvas showing through. Kind of reshaped that a little so there's a little more complexity. If I'd had more coffee, I might have shifted that value a little bit. There we go. It's okay. super satisfying in the words of my eight-year-old who loves to watch that series of satisfying videos that feels pretty good there's a little white there I don't like that grabbed a little of that wet, but I think that's okay. I'm going to see if later I need to shift those. I'm not sure. Look at that where there's that little tiny. I think this little guy is going to be fun when he gets something up next to him. I am going to lighten these guys quite a bit and I might shift that to something different. I don't know. I have to step back from it. I might use these lights for this one though before I mix it up differently. Maybe I'll do the darker in the back because we know that those recede. 
it's a little tighter spot. So I'm going to use a little more medium. I feel like I could use a smaller brush, but I'm like determined to do it all with this flat for some reason. I think what I'll do for this video is I'll finish the ribbon and then um, turn it off and come back to do the flower. Okay, I'll give. I'm gonna use a smaller brush. I'm still gonna use a flat. Mm, no, I don't like that. It has too much snap. And so I feel like I'm pushing the paint instead of dragging the paint. Come on, let's see if I can pull it off. Seems pretty good. I think a flower is going to go there, but I'll cut this in. Okay, I think I'm going to lighten a little for here, here, and here. <clears throat> so I'm just going to grab some of that. To look at my source information again. Seems okay. Okay. I'm going to wait to do this one because I'm leaning my arm here. Really using the edge of that flat brush to try to get a point. I want to retain that little bit of dark line there, the little detail. Oh, running out of paint. I can feel it starting to drag, so I'll reload. feel myself starting to get tired, shake a little here. I had a friend that I used to teach with at my old university um, in Michigan. We would team teach together and he always put in the syllabus um, that part of the participation grade was that your hands would cramp and your arms would shake if you were doing it right. I've reached that point. Might have to redo this one because it hasn't quite gotten that edge gone. Again, if, I think if I wasn't on camera, I would probably 
turn my canvas looks pretty good okay, I think I'm gonna do this one as much as I'm enjoying my rest Oops, wrong color. I feel like it's getting a little um, too draggy for the corner I want to make, so I'm just going to put a little more medium. Is where it can feel like it's got detail if you can get it to be really thin. I'm going to start somewhere else so I can feel the thickness of the paint. Decide how I want to make it happen. Here we go. I don't think I like that shape, so I'm going to try again. I'm going to bring the paint down to the tip again. Now's where I wish I had more of that blue so I could recut. Oops. grabbed a little of that medium color so I kind of blending it in okay I'm gonna run with that just using a little bit of a hatching mark cross hatching to try to flatten it out so this could be a lighter light. I still, I didn't mark that. No, I'm confused. Maybe I'll come into this one. A medium and a light. Oh, and a medium. Let's see. I'm gonna switch to this value. That's pretty small, so I'm going to add a little more medium so it moves a little better. Scoop the paint out of the barrel area. That's a pretty fun little value scale on the palette. <clears throat> I don't have my spot to rest my arm.
almost. <clears throat> Let's see about this edge here. This is pretty critical because this has already um, got a little detail work and it won't screw it up. Husband's playing guitar in the other room. I don't know if y'all can hear him. Got a little bit of the dark mixed in, but I'm gonna run with it. I don't know how I feel about that. I might work that out in a minute. I think I'm gonna. I still don't know what to do with that. I'll fix this one and I'll do this one. I, for, I forgot my medium here. Let's get this little light here. Kind of grabbed some of that dark so I mix my brush up again. Oops. That's a little less <clears throat> hard edge. I think I'm getting tired. Go do this one. Lay out that and then we'll take a break here. up more of that inside color make it like so jump up to the medium real quick this part of the bow is getting a little less graphic, but I'm going to run with it. I think I'm going to cover a lot of this ribbon with foliage anyway. Might put a little bit of it in here. So I've got some to work against with the flowers so that it's not, um, I don't have that weird white sitting underneath. That seems good. Right there. Okay, I'm gonna do this and then figure out, so one spot I didn't put a value. You guys on camera can probably tell me what I need, but since I'm sitting too close to it, I can't really tell. Maybe something like that, which I could use here, here, and here. Let's see what we can get. Let's scoop this in there. Just kind of use up what I have. I can use some of these lights for my flowers in a bit. That needs to be darker. Come back to it. I think I had a little bit of a edge of the ribbon at the top that was a different value too. I'm going to 
gonna put these petals back in. So I'm being kind of intentionally a little messy to remind myself that that drawing was there. Got a little light edge there. pretty good. There's some ribbon. So that needs to be somewhere between these two values and I think that's what this needs to be too. I pull a little more of this in here to break up where the flowers will go. Not looking at it. Okay. Yeah, I think this guy wonder what that was hmm. oh well okay so i'm gonna try to use some of the darker that i have i have to mix up some more that's a bummer i was so close I, this would be my nemesis so i'll do a little bit of i was using the prussian the panes and a little alizarin. Let's see how we do. I guess at this point, if it's a little different, it might be good for the cause. That's a little redder. I think my alizarin has a higher tinting strength. That's okay. It's pretty. I can use it. Oops, right in the white. I'm gonna scoop out that old paint. There we go. I don't think this is dark enough, but we're just gonna do it. Yeah, it's a little warmer. It's kind of fun. Yeah, I think that works. I might cut this again later, or maybe if I use a little tiny dry brush, I can slow that down. I don't know what color that was, but yeah, there we go. Yeah, reshape that a little. That's better. That edge a little crisper. Oops, come on now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not bad. That's gonna go in here. Try to retain a little of that dark so it looks like a a little tiny line or an edge, giving it a little detail. Hmm. I don't know what's happening there, but I'm just gonna leave it and we'll put a petal there. Ooh, geez. Oops, I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it. Layer this a little so that there's some of that value 
underneath the petals, a little more complexity. So it looks like the ribbon is kind of peeking through. I don't know what was happening here. I'm assuming maybe it was a dark, but I think for now, I'll have to cover that with a petal. I think for now, I'm gonna leave it and we'll pause the video. And I'll come back in a little bit um, to resolve whatever looks like it needs help here and then do the little detail work. Okay, see you in a bit. Oh, that's fun, I'm excited. <laughs> 